Recently, Timex dropped another bomb over the watch community once with the launch of the Q chronograph. This is a vintage inspired design which qualifies it as one of the best chronographs for the $200 price range. Then what's the deal with the Rolex X Timex? Well, Timex knows how to make vintage inspired watches, they know how to make homages after popular watches without making them too obvious. This time is Rolex's turn to be homaged. Timex offering here a close experience of the vintage Rolex Daytona with strong racing vibes. And speaking about racing, this is my Micro Chronographs collection. Three watches that lured me in time, getting finally the chance to have them in my collection. It's interesting because none of these three watches are hyped chronographs. Two of them already proved themselves as having a rich history but a niched audience. And let's see if the third, the Q chronograph is worthy to sit in a collection. I bought this watch a month ago, I couldn't find it available in Europe so I bought it from Australia. From Australia was sent to USA and then from USA arrived in my possession. I think this watch made the biggest trip around the world I've ever seen. Too bad it's not a GMT though. I overpaid a bit for this cube, but what do you know, once it arrived it also appeared available in Europe, cheaper and discounted for Black Friday. So much for my deal. I was mentioning the ability of the brand to get inspired from popular iconic watches, but still to use enough elements to connect these Q models with their quartz era identity, and props to their product designers. This Q chronograph is heavily inspired from the vintage Rolex Daytona from the 70s. We can spot the same chromatic contrasts between the bezel inserts, the dial and the subdials. Looking nearly at the same dial layout and the way the Rolex crown was replaced in this case with the Q metallic and oversized logo. Initially I was pretty surprised by the choice to use the oversized Q logo but then when I related the decision to the Daytona logo it kinda made sense. So why I didn't bought the Panda version? Well, I decided to buy the reverse one once because it comes with a bracelet and then the second reason, the Panda model doesn't look that much with the vintage Daytona and it feels pretty dull. It can happen because the dial is positive but it also contains metallic elements. I don't know, but one thing I know, this reverse Panda is dope. And then obviously we need to talk about the value offered for the money asked. I did mention quite a few times while I was reviewing the Moon's watches the vulnerability of these watches. The crystals are too soft, the plastic cases can easily get damaged. Overall the Moon's watches being more suitable for display purposes than watches to be worn on a daily basis. And everything that I've described is priced around $260. Where the Q chronograph really offers a sustainable quartz, a solid chassis and a metallic case that can last for a long time. And I believe this Timex Q provides unbeatable finishings, quality control, design and durability for the money asked. Because price wise this bracelet version retails at $219. And surprisingly if we look closely at these specs and the finishings, it's quite hard to understand how did they pull out such a small retail price. And as quick specifications, firstly the Q chronograph is bigger and thicker than the simple freehand Q. It is heavier, better made and more complex. In comparison my root beer looks pretty basic and dull compared to the chromatic elements which spread through the dial of this Q chronograph. The measurements are the following, has 40mm in width, 47mm lug to lug, 13.5mm in height, 18mm between the lugs, as waterproofness the watch offers 50m fall resistance and weights 120 grams. It is true a moon swatch is lighter with almost 4 times the weight of the Q, but the durability is uncompatible. And inside we have the Epson YM12A quartz movement with a date complication at 4 o'clock and offers a 5 year battery life. In details and as positives I do love the vintage inspired dial layout. It's quite curious how well the metallic elements are made with highly polished accents, offering that mirror finishing effect. But there is a downside to this, in specific lighting conditions. The composed effect of the metallic elements creates too many reflective points and the focus might get disturbed by these accents. Another thing to love about this Q are the subdials and the way they offer depth. It feels like we are looking at a sandwich dial. Also the tone of the subdial color brings value to the watch because it is not white, it's kind of a warm grey. And then the chronograph hand has a loom pip and that's new as not very often you can find chronographs with a diverse pip on the second hand. I did review recently the Nevada Lollipop Honey but except that one I can't remember another model with the same feature. But getting back to the thickness, a big percentage of the height of this Q is due to the tall boxed and domed mineral glass. 
In fact, I think I've never owned a watch with such a pronounced boxed glass. Also, the angle of the box is quite dramatic, similar to the Oris Diver 65. But the good part is that it does not create distortions as you might think. When angled, you can spot the bevel created by the crystal, but then if we angle it more, it's funny, you can read the subdials through the angled box facet. In general, the modern vintage reissues with box sapphire crystals create quite a lot of distortions towards the ends of the dial. But in this case, rarely you can spot distorted elements, and that's kind of cool. On a negative note, although I love the higher box glass, this contributes to the height of the watch of 13.5mm, which I consider it a bit too big for a quartz chronograph module. The loom is decent, the incandescence is good, but it does not last that much, kinda similar to the old 3 hands Q. And the case from the side has the similar Q design language, faceted horizontally, but in the case of the chronograph it is thicker. And then the bracelet this time, and unlike the standard Q which was shaving wrist, it is better refined. The links are bigger and the link joints are pretty rounded, so the wrist can be relieved. Although I found some areas where the Q pulls out the hair on the joints between the bracelet and the case. But not a big deal compared to the normal Q. The design of the bracelet is outstanding, feels like a great recreation of the 70s design, reminding me of the Quartz Digital Seikos, so I'll recall that the bracelet is worthy of the Q concept and the case design. And as well as the saw did for the PRX, this one comes with the quick removal spring bars to offer the ability to add the custom trimmed 18mm straps. And as wearing experience, once I found out about this release, I was 100% that this will wear very good on medium and smaller wrists. The Q platform overall is very good engineered and discreet, so I was sure that the chronograph will be super compact and comfortable on the wrist. The weight distribution is good, the lock to lock distance help, and at the end of the day the bracelet offers comfort as well. And as a conclusion, kudos for Timex, I think they are one of the fewer brands that offer quartz watches with hype around for extremely decent prices, and the Q series continues this successful path with this chronograph. And I think they made this watch as a logical move, but also as an answer to the Moon's watch hype, showing us that we still can buy a better durable chronograph with a bit of brand for less than the bioceramic, sorry, plastic price. So the title says it quite right, forget about the moon swatch. And in the end I'm really curious to know, what do you think about this Time XQ chronograph? Please let me know in the comments section. And as usual, if you're new here, please consider subscribing for future episodes. Thank you very much, thanks for watching and until next time, be brave! Stay safe.